I already had a cold. Listen, my hands are freezing. Uh, I'm 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 freezing, and I'm wearing two shirts, and and I put slacks on today. So I don't know what's going on. I just I feel like I'm I'm out of sorts. But I I, I am never never too out of sorts to bring you guys an all new smart list. Let's go. Smart. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, it's take one second. Don't oh, know. what's he doing? God. He's going potty, potty, potty. He's going potty, potty. He's taking a potty and he's taking a potty. Listener, we he's could have started on time, outside. but Will has got um, a child's a bladder. And um, <laughs> what, uh, no, he actually just, just came back just in grab? with two what did bottles you just grab? of water. Um, of water. I guess he's a little dehydrated. No, I like to I keep... got, I've grabbed one too. So, Will, you know, I, I got a little bit of grief, listener, for showing up 60 seconds late on our last no, session. You were three mm -hmm. minutes late. Oh, sorry. Check that. Uh, what's, what's, shit, what's the, what's the math on that? That's three so, minutes. That's 100 and, uh, so it's three times 60 times 60, 60, 180 so 180, seconds. 180 seconds late. So I showed up early today and I said, I said, you know what? It, the problem about showing up early is that you, you risk seeing who the mystery guest is. That's right. And then what happened? You saw the guest. And our mystery guest. This guest accidentally bumped their camera cover and revealed and themselves. Th and then I saw the guest was, and I'm thrilled. I don't know, but who it uh, is. no, I know because you were late. You see, that's <laughs> the advantage of being I think, late. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was right on time. Right on time. Um, Will, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm just bummed that you saw who it is, and because Why? it's not, a, it's not well, a real. What I was the whole surprise thing, it was just to cut down on our homework. It's not a real big part of this show, is I it? I think, no. I love it, and people love it, Yeah, I think. But but the audience is not, it's not a surprise to the audience. The audience no, knows because they know it's coming, but I don't know who it is. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm happy that we don't have to see your acting. Uh, pretending that you don't know who it is. Sean, because you don't want to see Sean's acting. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm glad that we don't have to watch you like go like, oh my God, who well, is was it? That, that's, and that's why I said I know who the guest is. So I don't Okay, have so to well, I'm acting. excited. So do we start or is there other topics to discuss? No, let's hear some of your pre show patter. <laughs> you always think I have pre show patter. Listen, Regis, you come with a couple I of don't. stories. You got any can. I can come up what with What happened something. during our break? We just recorded one listener and now Well, we I can talk I can talk about this Oh, what happened during our break? I bu I booked a little thing a job? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whatever. No. I bu I booked a two little night stay in this place oh, on for, Long Island. For Valentine's Day? No, for much later than that. Well, are right, you going to do anything for Scotty for Valentine's Day? We j we give each other a high five. I mean, nothing. We don't do anything. Uh, really? We That's don't it. do anything on our anniversary either. Do you guys do a stuff on your anniversary? Uh, I, I, when I, is I, your anniversary? We talked about this. Quick, when's your anniversary? M mine? Yeah. 11-11. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Does Jen and Amanda know that? They, they I know. Isn't that interesting? That. Yeah. Um, we're doing uh, next to nothing for Valentine's Day. Um Sometimes we do gifts for anniversary. I just feel like the whole gift thing and the whole, it's 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 it ends up becoming a bit of a burden, right? Because you're with the person all year, and well, but you get the, I get things that I want from her during the year, and she gets anyway, things from right. me exactly. Like so you don't need anything to like save up. No, you're not getting shit until there's an occasion. Is I think uh, weird. So right, and um, also you're not going to let corporate America dictate when you tell your wife and show her that you love her with their fucking. You know, you're not going to let If I thought like Will Arnett, company. that's what I would be. I'd be. It all would be about not not letting the man win. Yeah, you're going to rise up and fight screw against the man. It. Yeah, screw the man. Good for you. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you're just too fucking lazy to do anything or think about anybody <laughs> else other than car. yourself. Yes, I mean, if Valentine's Day was about golf, you'd go out of your fucking oh way. God. Celebrate. Yeah, Why yeah, does it have to would, be one day a year? Yeah. You would take <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I would love for you to just put on there now, just so Amanda <laughs> sees it and you don't plan it, that on February 14th, just put golf all day that you're going on a golf trip yeah. back to Pebble yeah. or something. Overnight Dude, golf trip. She'll I murder you. Just wait for her. I actually to... do have a little bit of golf scheduled for during the day. When the girls are in school. On uh, Valentine's Day? Amanda, and Amanda's busy doing something. Yeah, a man. Yeah, there it is. Nine nine thirty. Is that to the 2:30. thing that we're going to do? Uh, no, I'm going to. No, I'm going to invite no. you to this thing. Uh, nine thirty to two thirty. Um, but uh, Amanda's busy with uh, her work. She loves, and the girls are in school. And then it's listen. It's going to be in the morning and at night, huh? How you doing? <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Walk us through that. Yeah, <laughs> that's when the love happens. How you doing? House, and so. by the way, does it start with that? Do you, does it start with that? How you doing? Yeah, at no, dusk well, and no, dawn. Do you, morning and then how you doing? Yeah, well, why do your eyes get so heavy? Uh, just, you're just, you're just, keep it romantic. Uh, yeah. Eyes wide is not. There's nothing romantic about eyes, eyes wide. Eyes open. You guys that's, do it. That's eyes shock. Open. That's uh -oh. I used to do. Do you guys still do it? Eyes open, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Lots of eye contact. Like this, yeah. Like this face to. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes staring at each other, no blinking, no blink, no, <laughs> don't blink. <laughs> Wait, I used to go out to a bar with my eyes uh -oh. wide open, oh, with a bad. drink in my hand, like just looking for anybody. Who was that the interested. amphetamines? That was mostly really? amphetamines, right? Yeah, that kept yeah. the eyes real bright. Yeah, yeah, and then and then my how you doing would be much later. Yeah, after you normally it's okay to say how you doing after the deed, right? Yeah, that's right. That's, you're I'm gay, Sean. You can nice just, to meet you. As you're after paying. you can as you're yeah. zipping, you can say, "Hey, by do you mind way, I'm small Sean. bills?" And how you doing, yeah. by the way? <laughs> do you mind small bills? Small. Will what? Will what you do during the break, guy? For the last half hour, I went upstairs. I was uh, playing with the little kids. We were just goofing around. And what does that entail? What do you get down on the floor? You make funny yeah. faces. Yeah, uh -huh. get down on the floor, do a little bit. But of then what do you do with the kids? Legos. I mean, we did do a little bit of Lego. Really? And then, yeah, we did a little bit of Lego, and uh, and then just with you know Denny and and uh, what's his name? Quick, the other one. No, well, trouble? I was playing with Nash too. Denny and yeah, Nash were both go. there, but Good I was song. with I was kind of grabbing um, Archie or Abel. I know they're at yeah, school. Yeah, those are the other oh. two kids. Yeah, if he needs I know help, all though, the kids. Sean. I spend more you time. Know you know, you trip with my up. kids. In what's the your last brother's week name? Real quick, Will. What's your brother's name? Garrison. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> my brother Chuck, my mm -hmm. sweet brother Chuck, whom I adore. Both sisters, quick. Tannis and Shanley. All right. Mm -hmm. So my sisters and I grew up, and, and Chuck was much younger. He, or he is much younger. He's almost 10 years my junior. So my sisters and I grew up, we were closer in age. My older mm -hmm. sisters, I had two older sisters, Tan and Shan. What's up? They're great with Eddie in Toronto, all of whom you guys know. Sure, yeah. And then, uh, and then Chuck came along, and he was a surprise, as my parents call him. Uh huh. Oh, and, oops, and, baby. Yeah, he was a All real right. pleasant surprise. Sure. And, and we weren't allowed to call him Chuck or Charlie, so we had to call him Charles. Just oops. True story. Who's called him who, oops? who said that though? My mom. That? It, my mom. And so uh -huh. then, and then he became Charlesy, which is uh -huh. even worse. Mm hmm. Like, oh, there but he is. still There's honored her decision about what the name was. Well, yeah, we had to honor. Oh, you have to. You've met my mom. You got to honor my mom because if you now, go well, against I didn't Alex, name him Chuck. She will fucking take you still down to at this the day. Knees. So it's he, Charles. She corrects. She'll correct your 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 uh, your grammar or your spell, whatever. I love she'll it. He's strangers. She said, she, she'll wake she you up in the middle of the night to tell you uh, you're, oh, not you're sleeping, sleeping wrong. Wrong. Oh, you're sleeping wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 So well, good. actually, the doctors say that on your right side, because it's further away from your heart, like, hey, man, I was yeah. asleep for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, actually, technically, you weren't asleep. Um, Don't, what yeah. is Chuck, does Chuck prefer Chuck versus Charles? I think that uh, he doesn't really care, as it turns out. And so Bless we still heart. call him Chuck, and but he has a lot of friends who call him Charles. And uh, how about Chaz? Ever Chaz? Never any Chaz. You know who really doesn't care? You know yeah. who really doesn't care? The guest. Our guest. Yeah. Oh. You know what, Sean? I'm sorry, dude. Are you fucking late, dude? First of all, it's my guest, and I'll tell you if my guest cares. <laughs> good, and I good, know that well. she does care because she's interested. Oh, it's a female. In people. Oh. See, yeah, I'm and starting to again, play like I don't know. You know, I know. Stop. <laughs> eyebrows is... high. That you start with eyebrows high. Oh, it's awful. a female. What? Yeah. It's, but you know what? Jason likes. Uh, Jason does have something in common with this this person in that they were both actors from a young age. Yeah. Oh. They've both been doing it for a long time. Is this Drew Barrymore? And then they yeah. know well. And that would be a great guest. She has has had. Drew would be a great guest. Fuck, I didn't think about it. I'm working it. on it. I'm I know. On it. I, I wish that. Can't well, I hope this guest doesn't. I hope my guest doesn't hear that. She'll love it. Uh, <laughs> she has been in so many things. She's one again, and one of those people. If you start telling all the things she's in, you're going to know who she is. To me, she is one of the funniest people I know. 
Full stop. I, every, full stop. Every time I spend a moment with this person, um, is, even a text from this person, even if I get a smidge of it of a text from this person, I get a laugh. Even if I think about this person in the abstract, if I think about two six people removed from this person, I'm laughing. Okay? I had the good fortune of making... Well, what's what you'd call technically a film together uh, many years ago, but we spent a lot of time overseas. We were in Wales together, and we had a what? lot of laughs. And if mm. it wasn't for each other, uh, we probably both would have gone completely mad. Uh, and she's done so many amazing things, starting with, uh, you know, acclaimed roles like Slums in Beverly Hills, uh, to <sighs> Orange is the New Black, to That's Russian Natasha. Doll. It yes. is. This is the Natasha, Natasha the one and only. Leah. Hi, on. Now Forget you remove the camera. Wait, now, I do it. now you do it. God Look damn it. at her go. There she is. Oh, she's holding a microphone. She's got a hand like mic she's like, too. Oh, she's got yeah. a hand <laughs> mic. He asked me to put it somewhere, but I said I, I'm not a professional in this. No case. one's ever done cup. the hand mic. This is, oh, no, this, this yeah, is, this so is interesting. awesome. <laughs> now, hey, Will, did she spend any time it's me, in the room? Drew Barrymore. <laughs> you're no Drew Barrymore, but you know what you're, you'll do. What would hey, Drew Barrymore do? I love Drew Barrymore. Will, did she spend any time in the Rolls Royce in Wales? It was a Bentley. No, she never got in the Bentley. Well, I don't he did think. the Bentley in uh, London. In London, yeah, that's right. She's uh -huh. got a good memory. See? Yeah. Oh, we did do the Bentley in London. Did you ride him back, we Natasha? Did. Make him make your drive. Uh, he, he was your driver. Yeah, he was my chauffeur for the entire. I was your chauffeur. It's true. You can't quite call that a movie, can you? No, it's what, tough. What was it? What was it called? What? Oh, you guys haven't seen it? It's called Show Dogs. Oh, you guys haven't seen Show Dogs? <laughs> oh, no, no. This, <laughs> sounds, this sounds hand-drawn. <laughs> you know what, though? Very nice people involved. Very, very nice, nice people. Very nice people. And, a lot of and smelly dogs. A lot of dogs. It was live action. Live action. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was it? And I just, I mean, <laughs> I Do people call you Tasha, Natasha, Tashi, Tushy? Sure. 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 Okay. Tush. Yeah, sure. Tush, you call tush, me Tushy. Tush doll. Tushy. Hey, Tush. Makes sense. Wait. Natasha Leone, honest to God, one of the people who makes, I said it in the thing. And I'll say it again. God damn it, I've had some of my biggest goddamn laughs have been in your presence and the stuff that you says, that you says that you to me. you say to me. First of all, being with her over there, being with, and, and, and having this like catering truck, nice guys, super nice guys, but they would make these sandwiches that were like, flat white. Oh, flat, we were flat hot white for coffee. flat whites. Oh. They were so hot. Do you want a flat? <laughs> would you like a flat white? I'm like, I don't give a shit. I just What's want a, a flat white? What's a flat white? It's a coffee, right? And then, right. and then, a pr but what was the press sandwich it called? What would they call it? They called. Do you remember? Oh, God, I was just trying to think of that. Toasty. I only had. A toasty. A flat toasty. white and a toasty. Oh, a toasty oh, for right. tushy. A toasty for Tushy. Uh, have you seen this movie? A toasty is a play. It's a Neil Simon play. Toasty for Tushy. Were you looking to put on weight for the for the part, Will? <laughs> I'm, no, but I did. No, but I did. <laughs> Flat white sounds like full fat milk and yeah. lots of it. it. Was, no, it's like it's a it's a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, that that's the toasty that's part. The toasty. Yeah. That's the toasty. So yeah. Real yeah. And, and we were like at a certain point, and Natasha's like. Stop making a big deal. This is a why are you why are you guys offering to me like this is like some kind of found <laughs> fucking delicacy. Nice yeah, people. It's a coffee with milk and a grilled cheese that's been run over by a hot car. You want to have like nine of them a day though. Yeah, yeah. you do want to have nine oh, of them a day. I would. So anyway, so we were there, we had a lot of laughs. God, we had a lot of laughs, huh? Yeah, but it was dark. We had a lot. It was dark. Cut two. But we had a lot of laughs. Here we are in 2023. It was dark. Have you got have you guys worked together or hung out since then? No. Why? Why are you guys fighting? What happened? We text. We text. text. We text every once yeah. in a while. We text and... Uh, do you find Will a good texter, Natasha? Great question. I, I do. I think I think Will's a pretty solid citizen. Thank you. I'm yeah. a big fan. <laughs> solid Thank citizen. You. As far as guys yeah. go, because guys aren't great texters, right? I mean, like, yeah. like, do we get away with not being super responsive? He's the, yeah, the he worst. is not bad. You know, the funny person, but also a deep, a deep human being, it turns out. Yeah. Oh, well, so, so he'll send you a long one. Is that what you're saying? Text? It, it's implied. We it's have implied. A, we have a language. Yeah, we have a language it. between us. And it's, you know what it is? It's between the texts, you know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's the subtext. It's, it's, sub it's the subtext. It's the yeah, Does he it. have good emoji work? Because that's important. Or good I uh, Honestly, uh, I don't remember. I, don't I remember. think what's fun, though, is I think you programmed yourself as... Lil Big Willie or something. Let me look. Sure, that's oh. So I can never find you. It occurs to me periodically to text you, and I look up your name, and I can't find it, so I you give up. You let him input his number into your phone? Yeah. 
Yeah, I love that move. That, that's when you don't know the person's name. Hey, put your phone in my, put your number in my phone. <laughs> you hand when them the I'll phone. I'll text you yeah. now so that And it then you know what? We'd already we'd been shooting for a month. Yeah. I was like, this guy's great. He's so funny. We both great. love flat whites and toasties. <laughs> put your number in here, honey, I said. <laughs> this Wait, is Natasha. Me. All right, I'm what? texting you right yes, now so yeah. that it comes up. So, Natasha, you have like one of the coolest voices to ever walk the earth. I'm assuming you're from New York or a part of New York. Yeah, born here in the city, and I'm worried about the voice, so I'm concerned that it's such a hot topic. Increasingly, I'm... Oh, really? I mean, that doesn't end well, right? That is... <laughs> no, uh, I think it's, 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 the, it's, it's identifiable. It's like one of the greatest things in the world. Yeah. Do you do, like, uh, uh, voices for cartoons and animated films and stuff like that you have done? I, I do a measure, but uh, okay. Will's making much more. Yeah, he's killing yeah. it. Yeah, let's but we've that. got the new show now, Poker Face. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm excited the, on... for when we're all like seventy, and we're like, remember the. <laughs> and I, we think we're this... I, I think we're there. I think we're there. <laughs> we're vaguely trying to name projects from the past. We've maybe or maybe not done. You yes, there's a name... new program, Poker yes, Face. Us. Please, you tell us a no, new no, program. You tell us. <laughs> no, you tell us about the program that the the folks at home can be watching on the television sets. <sighs> Natasha, go ahead. You got it. You got to tune in. If you're gonna, you got to tune in. It's called Poker Face. It's uh, streaming on the cock, right? Cock stream. That's what they call it. The cock. <laughs> Is it, on, Is the it cock? on the cock? We, we gave it the name. The, no, who was it? Of our guest gave it the name. The, peacock. But said it's got to be. You got to call it the cock, obviously. Yeah. So, who? They told me I'm in the flock now. You, you're, in, you're in the you're flock. in the cock flock. I'm in the cock peacock. flock. You're yeah, in the streaming. Cock. You're streaming out of I'm the cock flock. Streaming out of the cock flock. <laughs> if you want to stream in the cock flock, you got to download get, the Peacock get onto the cock your flock stream. laptop <laughs> show. And it's uh, Ryan Johnson created it. Ryan, I love Ryan Johnson. Johnson. That's he passed a friend of the show. Uh, yes. And a very talented love. man. Yeah. What a nice and, person. Uh, huh? It's called Poker Face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just came out today, maybe. In the middle of the night, I guess they drop shows. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't. To me, that seems weird. Let's start dropping shows at midnight. You know what I heard midnight. it is? Yeah, go ahead. Your name is Will. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so I'm yeah, I'm, right. I'm going by, currently going by Will. Yeah. Yeah. So Will, uh, they <laughs> apparently they do it because if there's a a, a problem, a technical yeah. problem, yeah. they can fix it in the middle of the night. Well, Isn't yes. that something? Doesn't that tell you so much about uh, your friends at Netflix and so on? Uh, right. Really? It seems yeah. a little unfinished. <laughs> yeah, I, first of all, let me just say this. Fucking cross your T's and dot your fucking I's before you release a show, okay, streamers? Yeah. Right. Okay, this is just word to the streamers. But are you not at the age where you suddenly have that revelation yeah. that everybody is just another person and they're just doing their best? Like, I remember being a youth and I would think, surely adults have got this handled. And right. once you sort of turn something over, or Jason, you know... This uh, from Ozark, or I yeah. know from uh, running Russian Doll. You know, it's like yeah. you hand it over from the edit, and you think, okay, that's it. My part is over. Here are the yeah. deliverables, yeah. and they got it. Godspeed. Yeah. And then you find out about all these additional details while you're in the edit, and you're like, how the hell? And that's when you realize that everybody is a human being and another bozo on the bus. Yeah, it's it's amazing <laughs> that anything comes out uh, semi-round. Another bozo on the bus is the next my next yeah. show. It's All just, right. just the, the planet is just a fucking huge bus full of bozos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, it is. And you're being self-effacing there too, I'm sure, in that we, none of us, everybody's an idiot, including us, and it takes the best parts of all of us and none of the bad parts to make something uh, kind of semi-round, right? And with all the people it takes, all the people that are involved in a film or a show or anything like that, it's amazing that n not one of those people screws it up, you know, beyond recognition. Uh, it's like it's a miracle when stuff comes out that's halfway decent. Whereas if you're a painter, it just takes one person, one brush, boom, you get what you get. But this stuff is re tons of people on the team, right? So many people. And there's, yeah. so m there's so many aspects and layers. And, yeah. and it is crazy that, uh, like, when you see old photos of Thelma Shoemaker, yeah, the Scorsese editor. Yeah. And they're kind of sitting there and the pictures are so iconic and she's over there and they're cutting the film Splicing and it's like, it, we yeah. did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's what done. the movie is now. Right. And making things in this era as a director or something is bananas because even things like, uh, I remember screeners of Russian All this season went out without subtitles. And I was like, oh, these 
people must think I'm really a maniac. Like I'm just making a full European right. art film. Just things uh, like that will happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, things can go bad uh, at a lot of different stages. And then, and the, and even if things go great and they're well executed, just the the taste might be a little bit different than everything you guys have been doing in development and in production. In other words, if the marketing dresses it up in an outfit that is not reflective of what you're going to see when you actually watch the thing, now you've told people basically to pardon the, the the metaphor you know you've gotten them all excited about a a, a great chinese uh, food uh, dinner but you then end up serving them uh the greatest italian food you've ever made but they give it a false negative because it doesn't taste anything you know, like that chinese that fucking food. metaphor or for, i forgot you already asked for pardon for that before. pardon yeah okay. Sorry. i because I, I, I was going to yeah. attack that metaphor but luckily <laughs> it was a little clunky you, but i think you, i think that the message is sent and thus and go so by the cloak of darkness in the middle of the night, <laughs> like little elves, and they put it, they drop these things on. It's online. amazing that it all comes out decent. Uh, at yeah. midnight. Okay, so listen, so that's <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Now, you've had, you've been in, listen, let's be honest, you've been in show business since day one. <laughs> out the womb. Out the womb, you've been in show business, you've been doing this thing. You've been out there, you've been doing and you've and you've done it all. You've been a star, you've been a thing, and now you're a filmmaker, excuse me very much. But storyteller, you, well, storyteller. Storyteller. <laughs> I don't know if you know about our, our aversion to the term storyteller, because now everybody's a storyteller. Everybody Everyone just wants to tell stories. I'm picturing know? Gideon from all that jazz coming out the womb oh. with jazz hands, you know? <laughs> but no, it's, it's disgusting. It's a disgusting image. Honestly, Only Sean likes it. You can Showtime. Get, you can go park and you can you can you can get a you can get a, a fa fabulous teamster driving you over uh, from from parking to base camp, and they're like, well, you know, as a storyteller. Teller. I'm like, you're telling a story too? Everybody's <laughs> telling a story here today, huh? Everybody's got a story. Everybody's but, got a story. But, but you started, you've done so many different things in so many different eras of your life. Forget eras of the world, eras of your life. You you must look back and, and every, is every part of your life, and Jason, you too, is marked by what you were working on, what you were doing professionally. When it when it's so ever present, you know, guys like Sean and I grew up, and we we didn't grow up making movies, and we didn't start doing the, and acting and getting paid for it until we were in our twenties and thirties. Right. You guys were doing when you were kids. It must be this thing that is constantly like it's been ever present in your life. Yeah, what is that experience like, Natasha? I know Jason's answer. I mean, <laughs> I will say that there was a time I experienced it almost like a. Are you familiar with this uh, Fellini short film, Spirits of the um, Spirits? So it's, it's part of a trilogy called Spirits of the Dead. They are not familiar. Which with is, them. but you are. Which oh, is yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe short stories, and one is uh, Roger Vadim, and one is Louis Malle, and then there's the Fellini one, is called Toby Dammit with uh, Terrence Stamp, and it's very, it's very dark. It's almost like satanic, and it's like a uh, a warped circus, and it's sort of that version of the showbiz experience that's very, you know, wrapped in, in darkness and, uh, you know, it's, uh, and it's drunk and it's high and it's kind of that. And so I definitely would say that I'd had that window and then now all of a sudden, you know, uh, in my 40s, it somehow really flipped over the past kind of decade mm -hmm. where there's a sort of a beauty to all of that memory and attachment because now all of a sudden the players are becoming so recycled of, you know, friends of like 25 years or something, uh, you know, whether that's a, a Maya or your Amy and a, a Russian all or like um, it's something that leads me to with Ryan. That was so much of why I was so game for this show is I could tell sort of spot him from a distance of, oh, you're going to be one of these players. Like, mm -hmm. as soon as we worked together, well, I was like, oh, of course we're going to end up working together again. He's going to be so funny when he's old. Like, I don't even really think of it as show dogs, this movie we made that I guess involved talking dogs. I think <laughs> of it as you and I walking around Wales being like, what's happening? What are we doing? <laughs> Ordering more flat whites, like, doubled over, laughing hysterically, and that yeah. whenever I see you, yeah. I think of us laughing. I don't really think of us in a essentially failed talking dog picture. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah, yeah. It just, <laughs> so somewhere along the way, it went from like a head trip about the thing to uh -huh. the the beauty of the thing of like a life in the arts. Right. It all comes yeah. back around. That's beautifully said. 
Yeah, yeah I Jay, love that. Jay, what's your experience like in that? I, I joked earlier on that I know your answer. I don't know your answer. I mean, you're similarly, you've, it's been such an ever present thing in your life. Yeah, I mean, and there's good and bad of that. I'm sure Natasha, you, you'd agree. It's like there's uh, there's it's there's something great about having started so young, but then there's also like, well, but uh, maybe we should have tried to do something else too, or um, you know, being uh, well, it, it's not my interview, but uh, I, I feel very very lucky, as I'm sure you do, Natasha, that we're both still working in this business. You know, yeah. it, longevity is a is a real um, uh, metal. I I. I I, or rather, I should say, I'm very, I'm proud of that, that, that I'm still making a living at it because it's fickle. And is that how you came to being like, oh shit, now I gotta, I gotta start writing and directing? For me, I, I look back and I realize that, so I think at five years old, I'm, I'm on Pee Wee's Playhouse or whatever. And <laughs> I, I know he's not very trendy right now, but at the time, you know, when I was I think he's back. 15 and I was in the, this Woody Allen movie, it was like such a big deal and it felt like, ah. This is the cherry on top of a decade of acting, yeah. something my parents put me into. And then at 16, I was skipped by Tish to be a film and philosophy double major. I was like, oh, well, I'll read all these philosophy books and then I'll write and direct these sort of Bergman but funny movies because I'll be a filmmaker now. Right. And mm -hmm. then it sort of, you know, took 20 years to kind of get back there. And right. it ended up being, I guess, all the things. Was that similar to your... Mm -hmm version of how you got here? Yeah, you, you sort of, you have career, like I wanted to be the next Robert De Niro, you know, when I was like 12. And it was like, yeah. well, yeah, but um, I'm getting kicked out of class for being a class clown, so... Maybe when you I'll got go. kicked out of class, they, what, they just pulled the bus over and let you <laughs> off at Wilshire in Santa Monica. Because he was, he I was, was right to, there with Jason you. was going to school in a massage bus that toured the, <laughs> toured Los Angeles. Not Kids untrue. massaging each other. Not untrue. Um, but yeah, you know, you're like, well, I, you know, maybe I'll 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 go for the goal uh, later. Meanwhile, I I need to kind of make a living. Um, and and aren't we both so so fortunate that we've stayed uh, afloat long enough to circle back to our original sort of dreams of doing things that are different than what we've kind of become known for. Right. But the thing is, but what's so interesting about both of you guys is, I, I, and I'm not even joking, I'm learning stuff now that you guys probably learned, you know, 20 years before me having started so young. Well, so I you don't, guys did have, what's that? I don't believe that. Well, sorry. I don't believe that you're learning stuff now. I, 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 just, I, I no, feel just like in I general. Am. Sorry, oh, just in general. <laughs> Single sentence. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just had to cut you off there. I, no, 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 I, I get know it. you I get very it. You know well, what? and it doesn't seem true. like you're learning probably anything. True. Probably true. But 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 it would. It, it's not surprising, Sean. And actually, I think that you, you're you're right. I have the same thing. I learn stuff way later. The stuff that just that they know and yeah, because and they've grown up. It's in, it. in your bodies already, and we're. I'm still not. No joke. I'm still like learning stuff. That's well, you're your both, bones. and they're both, but they're both smart. I'm not surprised. You're both smart. You're both super talented, and so it's no wonder that you've kind of maintained that. And I think people say, "Well, you know, this guy he had a bad. He had a. He was young, and he was a performer, and then he and didn't really work out. And you know, truth be told, they might have not been that smart or that talented. I mean, let's be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, you can you can get away with uh, quite a bit of um, non smarts and non talent when you're, you know. Uh, Eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen years old. Just most sort of kids are dumb. Cereal. Yeah, yeah, and most kids are well. really dumb. And I want that. <laughs> I like, that's gonna I be like that. Somehow we've transitioned to attacking children. <laughs> the thing These about kids is just, they're yeah. fucking stupid. <laughs> they're stupid. And then they come out here and they try to do grown up stuff with yeah. their kid shit. And I'm they're all I'm done in with their it. pants. You know, <laughs> I, the, 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 I used to have this acting get a teacher. license, you dumb fuck. <laughs> I used to have this acting yeah. teacher. I used to have this acting teacher in New York. This guy George uh, Loras. He was a great guy, and he go. When you're working with a, a kid, the, what fucking experience is a kid gonna draw on? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. don't fucking know anything. But then, but but I, I'm I'm fascinated by this because you'll you'll see kids in movies and stuff who have this unbelievable uh, uh, a range of of ability to express emotion. You're like, how do you know that? Isn't that bizarre? They're psychos. Yeah, <laughs> total psychos. There's psychos, exactly. I, mm -hmm. I I remember I when I auditioned for Little House in the Prairie, I had to cry for Michael Landon, and I remember just you, you, we you all did. You train your brain to think about the most horrific thing in the world to bring up the tears. How old and were you? Then you eleven, and God. it's just like it's a muscle that is very unhealthy. 
You yeah. know, like still to this day, if I got to cry on camera, I will think of the most horrific thing I can, which currently is something terrible happening to my children, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. um, so I look at pictures on my iPhone right before they start rolling of my <laughs> sweet children, and I imagine horrific things happening uh, to them. I start getting weepy, and I say, okay, let's go. It's yeah. like, well, what are we doing? Yeah. We need new jobs. We need That's new terrible. jobs. This is the fuck. I know. Natasha, you don't do anything like that, do you? I mean, you don't think about Jason's kid, horrible things happening to Jason's <laughs> no, kids. We at least like, she needs to laugh. Oh, that's yeah. great. What a similar process. Yeah, oh my God, it would be so horrible if something happened to these children. I brought this up before. Children. I think, Jason, you used to, if people are breaking up on, if people are, uh, you know, uh, uh, corpsing, like going up and laughing on set, that you'll think about awful things happening to them. Uh, close. I actually, <laughs> this is a true story. I, true. If, if Will Speck told me that. When you guys were doing Office Christmas Party, he said yep. that, and everybody was cracking up doing this one scene. You go, how are you not cracking up? You said, I just imagine all of them dying. Yeah, it's not. It's it's actually worse than that. If 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 pinching my leg under camera under frame doesn't work, um, I will actually just think they these other actors that are being very very funny are ruining the movie. That they're being terrible actors and they're destroying this I project. I love that. That's I like worse it, than yeah. something that exactly. Dying. I get Jason, into disdain. Nothing worse than ruining. You guys are just in killing disdain. comedy. Disdain <laughs> wipes the humor out of my world. <laughs> so Natasha, where was I? All right. So now, you had all these great things. You've done all these things. As you mentioned, you did, you know, which at a time, again, not very popular uh, for a lot of reasons, but the Woody Allen picture, that was always like the, the kind of the hallmark of somebody who has accomplished a lot when you get asked to be part of one of those ensembles. You go, this is somebody who's important. It, it was kind of like a stamp, right, to get cast in those. At that moment, you are an important. So you, you had that. You, you were doing a lot of very cool stuff, uh, uh, and... And then uh, you've gone on to do lots of, you, you started working in television. In fact, you were one of the first streaming shows around was Orange is the New Black. And you yeah. became, you were a regular on that for seven years? Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, How so, did you, so great. as somebody who was such a stalwart in film, what was that transition like for you going to doing a in effect, the TV series. Was that something that you were interested in or or did you need the job at the time and you were like, fuck it, this is a great opportunity or, I don't know, did you like yeah, that process? it was process? super weird. I mean, I definitely, I even hear the way uh, Ryan and I will talk about this, you know, Poker Face mystery show and we we share a love of uh, Philip Marlowe, you know, and, and Altman's The Long Goodbye and, you know, I love it so much that in... Uh, co-creating Russian all there's like a cat oatmeal and it's a direct rip from from the long goodbye like there's so much about mm -hmm. that Philip Marlowe thing but um you know when I think of Peter Falk and like the love of Peter Falk it's not just Columbo I really think about all those Cassavetes films that you know as a teenager I was like this is who I am right. and then I'll be in them and then <laughs> yeah, yeah. write them direct them and you were you were an indie film person yeah and it was just you know and um Philip Marlowe uh, whatever, Jack Nicholson, Chinatown. And he also has references I don't have, like the Rockford Files or Magnum P.I. Like I sort of, yeah. he, he seems to sort of know all of the lineage and I'm pretty strictly film or if anything, even, you know, John Fonte or Raymond Chandler books, which I'm, he knows all of that too, but I'm just saying that I don't have that same um, fluency with television. So for sure, I always kind of, uh, raised myself on movies and thought that was the big goal. And then, yeah, I mean, basically I was a, you know, uh, pretty serious junkie for, I don't know, I guess I lost like a decade in there, which is always why, you know, I'm pickled, so I uh, look terrific, never looked better. And, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, also... I have Wait a second. the youth Wait a second. and the vibrancy of a 30-something, <laughs> thanks to losing a decade of life. You know what I mean? So those are the upshots, Will. You're kind of, you're kind of like a running back, like a football player who who who, yeah. who, who goes on the sidelines for 10 years and comes back, and he hasn't Come been getting back. hurt for 10 years, so he's still he's young, still, and, right? Still so that's you. And young and there, was, there was 10 years of fun and frolicking um, and no, no, uh, no real career work because I, I had one of those decades. You did? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. actually, I didn't really know that about you. Um, and I didn't about yours either. That, that, that's oh, really? why I'm asking. That's, that's what I meant by the uh, Fellini short film. Uh -huh. um, and I guess it was too obscure. I guess I was speaking in coded language for <laughs> well, now I, only I, myself. I came out of it with, uh, uh, first of all, an appreciation of employment. 
um, and another another at bat, another crack mm. at relevancy. And you were and you were partying pretty hard. Let's just say it that way, right? You were Jay. Yeah, I mean, I I don't. I mean, sure. Uh, I mean, I was out having fun every night. It was more sort of hedonism and debauchery than uh, than than you know something yeah. I felt like I needed to check myself in for. A while. But um, either right. way, I came out of it with like that appreciation, but also kind of seasoned and weathered and a little bit broken. Um, and I felt that that really helped some of my acting stuff, some of the directing mm -hmm. stuff. And um, my, my taste in things was, I think, more sophisticated, having gone through something a little less privileged and protected than, uh, you know, being wrapped up in the business. Well, I would say for sure, because it's really all the things you need to know about the human condition, belly of the beast, heart of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's seemingly like why Kerouac goes on the road. You know, I think that the, anyway, that the romanticism that surrounds it, uh, you do sort of, you know, return with, of course, the only problem is if you make it out yeah. alive. Yeah. And then they sort of, the thing that's less spoken is, you know, just how just how dark those dark nights of the soul are, just how mm -hmm. much that it ultimately, uh, you know, doesn't work. Like you can't, you, you can't sort of stop the negative self-talking, self-criticizing mind, no matter what you do. Right. So you're sort of really doomed to then also sort of take the years to correct it. It's a long way of saying that's how I ended up on, you know, what at the time was an internet show. Yeah. Uh, like, as you guys know so much about Netflix yeah. and kind of who knew. But certainly yeah. that was not the dream. But well, sorry. Hulu's, but. Hulu's a different thing. But so <laughs> did you, but <laughs> Natasha, thank you for laughing. I really appreciate it. Um, well, I was going to say, I just wanted to say, yeah, you know, you can, you run the risk, of course, in those, of, of doing irreparable damage and not just sort of physically like that you can't come back from, but almost, almost spiritually and, and, and right. You can, if that darkness gets too dark, can you make that rebound and come back and live a life that where you're not too scarred by the self-inflicted wounds, um, and are you able to let it it's go? A, it's a razor's edge. Yeah, are you able to let it go? Are you able to move on? Some of that is like, can you give yourself a break? Can you forgive yourself? Can you forgive all those uh -huh. things? Can you can you make that that step? And I, look, from what I know about you, um, you know, I think that one of the great things is, is you're a very open person, and I know that you help a lot of people, and you're very generous. You have, you're very generous of spirit and of heart, and I bet you that's a big part of, of how you've been able to come back. I, I've, I've seen it firsthand, and it's one of the things that I really admire about you. I appreciate that, but let's give Natasha some questions <laughs> and some... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Henny. Um, <laughs> wait, Sean, are you doing... Uh... An Oscar Levant situation? He sure is. Oh, and what is the date in the theater, God. please, Good Sean? Good night, Oscar. It's April, it, it opens April, April 24th at the Belasco Theater the Belasco in New, Theater. New York. I in New am, York. you know, I am obsessed with Oscar Levant. He's oh, really? one of my favorite figures of all time. And I feel like with that coincidence, we'd be remiss to not say, I mean, that's a guy who knows about oh, God. this all whole game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he, he, yeah, he was, a, a, one of my favorite uh, one-liners was, uh, he said, I take prescription pills for the side effects. Right, sure. <laughs> well, then, Natasha, it sounds like you're coming to opening night with us on the 24th. Yeah, 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 April 24th. I don't want to know you gotta, that. We're going to be in New York. Come that. on, come uh -huh. with us. Yeah. It's going to be wait, amazing. Um, Natasha, do and we're you... Gonna, we've, Sean knows. Sean! Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah, here. That's we, he said, don't let him know if you're there. Hey, I, I think he, he means no. before Shawnee. the curtain. So once the curtain goes up... Sean, that was so funny. That last line yeah. was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> God, that is, that would be my worst nightmare. I'm gonna get Natasha to come with us. Um, so, uh, but Natasha, do you? Did I, by the way, we can cut this or whatever. But I'm always fascinated by addiction. It's been in my family. It's been in my friends. Whatever. It's been all around me my whole life. Is do you ever feel a, a pull back there? And what do you do to stop that desire if you do feel that? Or are you so on the other side Whoa. that you're like not at all? You know. And it's helpful to get older because you you're lazier. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it would take it takes so much energy to be like scoring. Yeah, you got to put the number in the beeper, and then you got to meet the guy on the side of the road. It's cold out. You're standing on the corner, and they're not meeting you. Now you're strung out. Now it's in the morning. You know what I mean? Like so cash from the ATM. It's just yeah, it's a lot of ATM shenanigans. A lot of energy. Yeah. And I just I don't know if I've got it like that anymore but i would say that you know for sure it is sort of like core to uh 
a DNA or whatever that I that I have on on both sides of the coin. You know, whether that's like the darkness of it or or the 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 lightness of sort of uh, emerging from that and seeing life through a greater you know perspective or yeah. you know, a prism of sort of gratitude or something. But it's uh, it's also like helpful in in weird situations like. Uh, I don't know if you guys who have any experience with this find that, uh, like, I'm not much moved by something like night shoots or something. Mm. You know, like, I'll see a lot of people that are walking around me like, oh, my God, it's so crazy. It's like 3 a.m. I'm like, who am I? You know, and I'm like, who am I? I've always been the right. caretaker. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, 3 a.m. Yeah. is my I'm the hour, opposite. Baby. I'm like, if I'm driving home with the sun coming up, I, this is usually a bad sign. Yeah, and yeah. I, so I don't like night shoots. It reminds you don't me of like the old days. Anymore. Yeah, but what about addiction? Like, like I'm, I'm, I'll always be an addict. I've just managed to channel that into something much less hurtful, much more productive, uh, uh, much more upstanding. Um, Do you mean just pure workaholism? Because well, yeah. yeah, I'm like now, and when people are like, "Oh my god, how do you do it?" You're like a writer, a director, a showrunner, and you're acting, and you're like, yeah. "Well, it's all one job," and I'm. And obsessive. I mean, it's right. another way of being like, yeah. Um, yeah, and you got so. the company and you got like 19 shows and you want right. to direct three movies and how are you going to do all that? And it's like, well, you know, how did I, you know, smoke all that dust? That was right. not my problem. PCP <laughs> was not my problem. Sure, sure, sure. But if it were, you would have, <laughs> yeah. I'd love but to if be able it were, to say smoke and dust. I, yeah. you, how was your weekend? It's mainly smoke, smoke and dust. dust. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking dusted uh, this weekend. I love, I love I <laughs> wish I'd smoke dust. Sure. Wait, and I read, I read they a lot. They say smoke and dust is not a relapse. By the way, Oscar Levant <laughs> said that. <laughs> yeah, no, Levant said eating ain't cheating. That, that was the man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what I love, uh, Natasha, is the the ease. I don't know. There's something about the way that you deal with and talk about that time in your life. Because I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I know, look, I always think about it from my experiences. I needed contrast. And it's been a lifelong thing for me of dealing with that contrast and going through those times. I, again, I don't prescribe it for anybody. Um, but sort of coming out the other end of it, it, it does give you, I don't know, perspective. And I've had so much perspective and, I, and I've been the beneficiary of so many people's, so much kindness and so many other people have been really helpful and, and great people in my life. And it's given me now as I'm 52, such a different appreciation for life and appreciation for yeah. my kids and appreciation yeah. for the people I love. And it gives me such a great better um, approach to life day to day. I, I don't sweat the small stuff in ways that I used to. Uh, I don't, all that kind of shit. I'm just, I, I don't know. I wake up every day. I don't know about you. I wake up every day and I'm like, boy, I'm happy. It's a nice day out today. Boy, I'm lucky. I'm having this cup of coffee. Boy, I, I got yeah, to suck fuck. back six cigarettes yeah. while I'm doing my little, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, the yeah. beautiful Working things. Yeah. Well, you can't, you definitely, I would say, you know, first of all, I mean, I'm transparent about it. Um, well, one aspect of it is I, I have no choice, right? Like, in other words, it's out there. It, I guess I was lucky that it wasn't in a uh, cell phone era. Yeah. So there's not too many crazy pictures, but, you know, it was definitely Same. news. And um, I didn't hear it. I, it's news to me on this, and I gobble up a bunch of pop culture. No, oh, you really? don't fucking follow You, you should no. read some of, like, the post from the 90s, I feel really? like. Really? Just go backlog, <laughs> microfiche. No You'll find it. And My, microfiche. You know. Amanda, <laughs> Amanda, microfiche. His, I mean, Amanda, his wife, who you might know, complained to me the other day at how little you pay attention to what's going on. Well, no, but I well, it's because I'm busy watching the news. <laughs> no, you're, watching, you're not watching the news. But I, I think more than that, it's a... There's an opportunity there, you know, in the transparency, which makes yeah. you sort of right. like I always feel like I have this um, sort of duty in a way to my uh, inner child, for lack of a better term, which is really like she wants to she very badly wants to tell the truth. Like she mm -hmm. uh, she really is like hell bent on integrity and good times and, and hanging out and is sort of like a, a misfit and lawless. And I have to kind of like wrangle her and make her do adult stuff. Like, and, but mostly she just doesn't understand. And I would say I have this very much in common with uh, Charlie, this uh, character from Poker Face, who like doesn't understand the point of lying since we all die. Like John Lennon says, just give me some truth, you know, and really doesn't understand why the setup or the conceit of life is about, you know, small talk and being fake and lying about how well you're doing. Like, there is nothing inherently embarrassing about life being a double-edged sword. And, you know, the the buy-in of the game is 
we all die in the end, and that's a super head trip. And the whole time you're supposed to be sort of ambitious and involved yeah. in this rat race and watching out for your health. And, you know, you see bodies piling up of, um, you know, people, suicide rates or whatever. It's, it's just, it's hard to kind of make sense of the riddle of the game. And yeah. addiction certainly helps you to understand that, like, every person, I mean, it's one of the darkest parts of showbiz is, you know, the solipsism that comes with people thinking, they're the center of the universe. So like that mm. revelation of getting clean is that's the big one, right? And you start to see that everybody is a real person who's going through all their own little micro dramas and darkness and all this stuff. So I don't know, just globally, to me, it feels like transparency is a sort of, you may as well, because what's what's the difference? Like there's well, I think about that so, all such a better time. chance of helping. Well, I something. think the only, the only problem is you run the risk of, because people have sensationalism and click feed and bait and all that kind of stuff that they want to uh, take, boil what you say and your views on stuff and boil it down to, I remember once when I was very honest about the fact that I had relapse, you know, I say relapse, but whatever that means to people. When I had gone out and... and I've been drinking, and and there was like a you know all of a sudden like the Daily Mail like Will Arnett admits that he that he hit the bottle. Well, I didn't fucking hit the bottle, you know. It's like and that's and then it was picked up a bunch of right. different stuff. And so then somebody else says like, Hey, you don't want to talk about it anymore? I go, Not really, because every time I do, I, it fucking smacks me in the face because mm -hmm. somebody writes some snarky fucking one line click thing. So it's right. like yeah, but that's that's the media's agenda, you know. And you, that's their business. It's none of our business. But what I sense from from you, Will, and from you, Natasha, and what I try to do is is do exactly what you're talking about, Natasha, which is be mindful of that that little kid that's still in all of us. And if you are, if you're honest with that little kid, and you give that little kid uh, the the sort of uh, the agency that that kid deserves in your life, you know that presence in your life. And you don't try to, you know, work on some veneer or some artifice that keeps right. that little kid hidden in, and instead let that kid be a part of your, your decisions and your behavior every single day, then you're not asking people to buy a bunch of shit that you can't sell real good. You know, right. you, you're just being honest and, and being you and being the only you. There's only one Natasha. I think, you know? that, I, I think that's right. Natasha, do you, I was thinking about this last night. Do you have... I think that there's great power in being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Amen. Or being open. It's the only way we can be funny. All four of us are funny. Like that, you can't, there's nothing funny about somebody who's bulletproof. Like it's all about, right. you know, warts and all and, and being Because, you uh, know, the flawed. thing that what you touched on, Natasha, about talking about we're all going to die, I think about that all the time and not in a morbid way, but it makes you become self aware. I bet you're first, Sean. <laughs> Just saying it now. <laughs> it be, okay? be, makes you become self aware enough to do what, exactly what Will's about to say which was become vulnerable. So if you're aware of your existence and your soon-to-be non-existence, you know, it, be, it makes you go, like you said, like, who gives a shit about any of it? Let you, it be open, be honest, be vulnerable. Tell people how you feel in the moment. And if it scares you, it, it, it's a way to overcome that fear of expressing your emotion, I think. Yeah. And I do definitely feel like that softening happening. Of Like, I think it was so... I think I was... Uh, you know, I was so into kind of like tough guys as a kid yeah. growing up. That's probably yeah. why I had like this, you know, accent or whatever. I'd watch uh, Scarface or like Sylvester Stallone, Rocky. That's what I want to be. And like <laughs> you were saying, De Niro. And I mean, I loved, you know, Betty Davis and, and uh, Jessica Lange and whatever. But really, I was like, those are my guys. Yeah. And I think also in many ways I was using that as a, a way to sort of be safe in the world and say, hey, I'm not like this other game. And... Right. uh now over the years, though, even in even in talking about things like uh, addiction, which is it's just something that never goes away. I mean, those are just like facts. Yeah, There's nothing yeah. to really hide there. To it'd be a scam to say otherwise. Uh, it it does, I do now feel this sort of softening happening where, yeah, it's just you may as well tell the truth because what else are you going to do? And you may as well like you know, Will, when you say, I wake up and it's it's a beautiful day and I'm grateful. It's like. You know, for sure, sometimes that takes me a second, but it's like the the gift in a way is the um, the experience or the familiarity with self to not take it too seriously anymore, yeah, kind of. Yeah. the mm -hmm. Whatever, that sort of, I guess, more like a Buddhist idea of watching the thoughts or something. So I'm more like, oh, right, I think it's a piece of shit day, but yeah. we're going to get up and, like, have some coffee. And, I mean, it's really, for me, the joy of comedy or, like, you know... Um, like spending this kind of life with Fred and Maya and Amy is like 
just that sense of now we're laughing hysterically about a third thing. And in that space, it is an altered state. And now I'm kind of, I've had a full mood shift where suddenly I'm stoked and now I'm in the car driving and the sun is sort of, you know, music's playing. And I'm like, yeah. hey, it's not that bad, is it? Yeah, uh, it's your new healthy drug. Jason, can I ask you a question? Do you Please. find that you're sort of like, before you start a season of Ozark, like for me with Russian Dolls, a little bit like before I start the season, I'm like, and that's who I'm going to be. And I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be excited about this cup of coffee. I'm so great. I get to have this show and it's my baby and uh, uh-huh. it's going to be great. And then the the rush of sort of like, um, almost like the thinking at that level and working yourself at that level in the writer's room and the like the pre-production and that you're really, you find yourself getting tight and it's not quite, it's not as easy as it was. Like you really have to set aside time to not buy into the fact that this sort of alternate reality that's sort of anxiety based, you know what I mean? Of just logistics in a way is, because yeah. sometimes I find that I have to really like, that's when the, the rubber meets the road for me mm-hmm. of, you know, do you find that? Yeah, there's a lot of logistics and nuts and bolts and blocking and tackling that goes into what, up until you start work is just this pure it just lives in your brain and it's going to be perfect and there's the uh i think it was ben stiller that made some uh, analogy once that like starting a movie as a director is a, the painting is perfect and then all the way through the production and development pre uh, principal photography and then post you're trying to there's like this fungus that starts to come in from the from from the uh from the uh which we call it the uh, the frame, frame of the picture yeah and it starts to take over the picture and you got to just keep the fungus back from the and if you can get maybe uh you're done when maybe there's 30 percent of the picture is is infested with this fungus you've done pretty good and the fungus is probably a little bit more of a pejorative than what he meant but it's it's you bring in all these collaborative thoughts and oftentimes are better thoughts, but it changes your picture. It changes the painting. And that doesn't deserve a false negative. It, it actually changing the picture is actually a good thing because that is the result of, you know, sort of this teamwork and this, uh, you know, it, it takes a village and let people contribute. I find that that's when I really like, I really, you know, when I'm sort of with my friends in Costa Rica and we're surfing, I'm like, yeah, fucking A, man. This is mm-hmm. good. And I find that that's the most when I have to sort of reset and not sort of buy the lie of the mind that, like, this is so real, the stakes are so high. And that's when, like, things are really, that's when I can almost, uh, you know, when it's sort of that time is that sort of significant is when I really feel sort of all the kind of work on self or revelations or whatever. Like, I remember walking on set on Russian Doll, and it's scary. You know, season two, COVID is so, this like, the COVID shit is very intense when you're the boss, right? Like, yeah. it's yeah. scary anyway, but now you're responsible for so many people's health. And I remember at one point, like, walking onto the, the stage, and they were like, hello, hello, Natasha. And I walked on, and, uh, you know, I do all the jobs, right? And I was like, holy shit, this is like, exactly where I was supposed to be, you know, Mm -hmm. meaning despite all of that, all the other kind of like outside elements, it was so sure kind of in my bones. And like, that's what I mean by like me and the kid were kind of happy. And then we were sort of delighted Mm -hmm. by the kind of anxiety. And I sort of like, I felt the, the road widen a little bit of, uh, oh, that's right. This is like this fun, crazy thing that like we get to do. It's not... You know, this is that thing that I really, really love doing. I mean, directing in general is a is a very joyous sport. I would say of it just feels so awake and alive in a way that sometimes I think when I'm only acting, like it's different on something like this because you know Ryan and I have like a real partnership. Meaning, in many ways, I think, or even I would say for us, show dogs was like the two of us were in it together. Mm-hmm. Meaning, on some level, it's like a body of work where it becomes. The collaborator is what matters because you feel like you're you're in something together, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes with if you're just like 
you know, acting and you have no say, you can almost feel very far from like the center right. of the action yeah. and kind of, mm -hmm. all right, so you're just going to tell me who's like a middle-aged person who's been doing this for 35 years, like, oh, should I come stand over there or right. something? Or you're concerned I'm going to go pee and maybe I'll never come back. I'll forget right. that we're shooting, you know? <laughs> like, uh. they're just so concerned all the I time. Know. Are I you know. directing any of these poker faces? Oh, yeah, I did one. Um, I did one that, that's not... Uh, so like, the last one we finished because of the schedule and everything, but it's uh, Nick Nolte. I got to direct Nick Nolte. Oh, no oh, way. Oh, yes. And now there's a real troublemaker. Yeah. Uh, he was great. <laughs> was he responsive to your direction? Oh, yes. And, like, we had that thing that you're talking about, uh, that, like, vulnerability that comes on the other side of darkness or whatever, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. is we speak, like, we speak you the same ingi, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's great. Uh, so we had a lot of fun together. That's and, cool. oh, my God, I love him. Yeah, he's so interesting. What a great actor. I'm a yeah, huge fan of his. Yeah, I haven't thought about him in a minute. About, I haven't yeah. seen him in anything he for brings a while. A lot. I'm so glad that you got him That's going to gonna be cool. Oh, my God. He's so, like, that face is really addictive. Uh, That's what I mean by, like, at the, you're standing at the monitor and, like, you know, we use all these uh, zoom guns on Poker Face, like little, like, Altman slow, slow zooms or whatever. Yeah. And you're just, like, standing at the monitor, riveted, just pushing in on Nolte, and all he's doing is thinking, you're like, Oh, that's a fucking actor. Like, you know, that's just the smallest like flicker and you're fascinated. Like, how do I get inside of your face? I love yeah, you yeah. using the zoom too instead of the dolly push. It's it's such a different feel. It's it's a I, I just I I dork out on that. It's, yeah, that's a lot like Ryan uh I guess I guess it's uh, Stevie Edlin shot the pilot who does all the, you know, oh, Brick wow. and Looper and Star yeah. Wars and all the knives out glass onion with him and yeah, it's uh, a lot of that's like baked into the DNA, DNA of even a, you know, like the Columbo pilot that Spielberg did, with like that's got that long uh, shot down uh, to the road. Wow. Yeah. I was just thinking about how do I how do I get inside your face, and that's obviously what the sodium said to you, Jason, last night. <laughs> yeah, it, but it, it, it did. It got there. Got no resistance for me. It got there. It got. Uh, right the door there. was wide now, open. Jesus. Natasha, would you would you be happy if you did nothing but direct the rest of your career as opposed to act, or you want to do a little of each? I mean, I, I think so. I'm definitely like wanting to be in my Sydney Pollock era, where, you mm. know, like Kubrick calls you up and says, "Hey, come be in." Uh, you eyes know, wide shut. Yeah, come be an eyes wide shut, but mostly you're kind of... Also, I like... I feel like we don't talk about those guys enough, like the Sydney Pollocks who are just kind of... Nah, well, you man, can direct I'm it like, you know, like Tootsie and just give yourself a great role in it. You exactly. Know? Yeah. But yeah. that oh, that kind of... I yeah. would like to be that guy. That's yeah. like my dream sweet spot. Right, right. It's so funny you say I just watched for a different reason. I watched uh, uh, the first half of uh, Husbands and Wives the other night. And Poll Sidney Pollock's in that. Remember, he in the first scene he comes in, he says they're getting divorced, they're going to go for a thing. He's so great. And there was something I was, th and then I was thinking about him and Tootsie and stuff. And this guy yeah, is like, he's, he's a stag. fucking gem, wasn't he? He did so many episodes of Will and Grace. He played uh, Will's dad. He was Sidney great. Pollock. Yeah, it was wow. fantastic. Wow. Huh. Amazing to to be, and so are you, Natasha. You did an episode of Will and Grace. I sure Favreau did. Favreau puts fantastic. himself in a lot of the movies he does too. Yeah. John likes a John little, Favre, little yeah. acting. Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of, that's, a, I guess, you know, Ron Howard's done very nicely for himself, mm -hmm. but I guess he doesn't, does he really act at all anymore? No, he puts Not Clinton no. in. Puts Clinton in, instead. Uh -huh. He puts his Clint brother in, he won't do yeah. it. Danny DeVito, you know, really underrated. I mean, he's made some major movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And that's Clooney, uh, Clooney directs himself. Affleck directs himself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jakey Bates, Jason Bateman directs Jason himself. Bateman. Yeah, Lil Jakey uh, Bates. Uh, mm -hmm. Bradley, think about Bradley. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley, yeah, Bradley with Maestro, you know, obviously Star is Born Incredible, and now his new film, Maestro, is mm -hmm. off stunning. the chart. Can't yeah. wait. Have you seen it? Can't wait to see yeah. it. It's stunning. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, and also he's done such a, you know, great job that it feels like a real event when he's directing something, and also he gets to work with so many great people when yeah. he's just acting, you know, because I think, yeah. and I sort of have this theory that, we're all going to look back as, uh, you know, we're dying. We're not going to really remember, kind of like, in this one, I was uh, the director. But this one, I was an executive yeah. producer. Like, just all of that sort of sense of ego around it will fall away, and it'll be more like sort of like flashes of the things we made with the people we were hanging out with or something. Right. Getting and, back to what you were talking about before. It's yeah. like, uh, I'd be happy if I spent the rest of my life just working with the folks that I've really enjoyed working with and my friends. And I mean, I think we've accrued uh, a nice big troop. Yeah. We should start uh, just getting going on that. 
Yeah, I but so I too. do. I love that directing. It makes me so happy. Yeah, it really does. Oh, Natasha, um, I mean, we've, we've honestly, taken ten more minutes than an hour. That's going to cost. Yeah, we've us. done longer with you than wow. than we usually go with really? people. Yeah, yeah. And we you said a hundred dollars per minute over the sixty. Wow. Right? So, so that's, that's uh, right. yeah. a thousand bucks. That's, uh, uh, we'll split that up three ways. Yeah. Um, well, it was a tough deal, but I'm glad you came. I'm so I'm so glad that you said yes to coming and doing this show, Natasha. I just yeah. honestly, I just love talking to you, and uh, you're such a great person. Thank you, and Natasha. Thank you. I'm Thank you, so Natasha. happy for Likewise. all your success, and I'm very happy about Poker Face. Can't wait. Wait, is it out or co it's coming? Oh, it's out. So it's it's out now. It's on Peacock. It's on Peacock. It's, it's, it's really pretty great. I mean, right. Ryan is great. Ryan yeah. Johnson, Poker Face on the streaming on the cock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wherever you can, wherever you get your cock. cock. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you get your cock from, because I don't know, some people use Apple TV or they get another thing, but uh, yeah, what I'm saying is wherever, wherever it is that you generally get your cock, <laughs> That's what this you is a great stream coming Sean, out I'm it. really coming to that Oscar Levan. I'm telling you right now. I would love yeah. it. Come we'll see. Carpool. End of April, we're all going to the premiere. It's going to be a big event. Uh, it's, it's going to be incredible. Sweet. So you're welcome to come. Please do. We'd love to have you. Come anytime. All right, guys. Thank come you. Come anytime. That's what on the cock. On the cock. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Natasha Leone. We love you. You're the greatest. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Thanks, Natasha. Guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye bye bye. 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 I've never told a guest to to slam it. Have you? Have you? Well, told we it? did two of your guests today. They both slammed. I have yeah. never. Well, I'm, explain what slam means. Well, when you just shut the laptop and end the interview at yeah, the right. end instead of doing the awkward sort of like, okay, right. so goodbye, right. guys. So, bye, that was fun. Bye. Bye. Yeah, right no. after saying goodbye and then before yeah. they end, they just, uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. Bennett and Rob are giving them the heads up to go ahead and do the slam thing. Because we don't need we don't need follow up at the end with them, you know. Yeah, exactly. We just had end an hour. Interview. Right. Here's what I love about her, by the way. I love yeah. that she's like completely open, unapologetic, comfortable in talk skin. about anything. Just, she's no nonsense, man. Yeah, I've never, I've that. never talked to her. I've never hung out Have with you her. Not? I just, no, I mean, oh. I've, I've, I think I've met her a couple of times. I think I met her once with Amy when she was doing a Russian doll thing at a Netflix thing. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, but that's that's yeah, that's, that's the most I've right ever heard. Yeah, she and Amy. I, so I Amy really Pullen, uh, produced uh, um, that Russian doll with her. That Natasha was yeah, the show. Huge success. Her, and Amy produced it. A huge success. Uh, they're very good friends. Um, but we didn't really. I knew. I mean, I knew her a little bit just because she and Amy were friends. But she and I became friends going doing this that kids movie overseas, and uh, we had a lot of fun. And, and it, she's one of those great people to be kind of out of the country with because uh, she's really funny yeah and she's like when a, weird shit happens she just makes makes you laugh she seems like way. the best person to hang well, out if we ever take smartless on the road uh to europe maybe we can make her a roadie she'd yeah. love it she'd love right? to be a roadie be like the highest roadie. paid roadie of all time <laughs> she, right. yeah um what do you think of my hair today i think it's really great yeah yeah, yeah. it looks like you've been um Riding at a high speed on a motor. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, you're the one who went up. I'm not supposed to go up. Well, I went and down I get... before and it felt like a fizzle. Oh, okay. I like said, Mike. <laughs> Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarv, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smartless. Meet Jill Evans. Jill's got it all. A big house, fast car, two kids, and a great career. But Jill has a problem. When it comes to love, Jill can never seem to get things right. And then along comes Dean. I can't believe my luck. Whoa, I've hit the jackpot. It looks like they're going to live happily ever after. But on Halloween night, things get a little gruesome. This is where the shooting happened outside a building society in New Romney. It's thought the 42-year-old victim was killed after he opened fire on police. And Jill's life is changed forever. From Wondery and Novel comes Stolen Hearts, a story about a cop who falls in love with a man who is not all he seems to be. I'm Kerry Godleyman. Follow Stolen Hearts on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts.
You can listen early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.